Hey guys, Disco here. I am not back at 100%. So, um, so today I'm going to be reacting to the Dead by Daylight uh, January 2024 developer update. Um, I know I'm late to this. Um, I believe this was uploaded yesterday as of recording this, or a few days ago. Uh, Orange was bombarding me with messages, so he vaguely said a few things about this. I didn't even know it was happening because um, I'm still recovering from my surgery, but I had some downtime today and I felt good enough despite the fact that my job will definitely hurt during this video, so expect me to mention it because um, talking, I, I'm still not great at talking. I can do it a lot better now than the past few days, but I'm, 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 not, I, I'm, I'm not good enough, but yeah, let's jump into this before I proceed to just ramble about nonsense. Uh, Happy New Year. Our team is back in action, and we've got Doozle, and we've got Doozy, not Doozle, what am I talking about, of a developer update in store for you today. In this edition, we'll be covering everything coming to Dead by Daylight in our first major update of the year from various killer perks and map updates and more. We've been busy, so buckle up. It's a long one. I don't want it to be long, though. <laughs> I want short easy. Generators. Kicking things off. No pun intended. We have a few updates to generators. Who knows what they're going to do. Um, more specifically, these changes target how generators are damaged by the killer and how their regression can be stopped by survivors. The goal with this update is to bring an end to excessively long matches, three gen scenarios in particular, and at the same time improve the killer's ability to damage generators. Regen scenarios are just for the killer and defend generators that are close by in particular and does not particular and does not participate in normal gameplay and not chasing survivors so in this instance survivors are not able to make any meaningful progress to those generators. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely nervous anytime they touch generators because ever since the forty perk rework I've been very not happy about the game because they um they literally stated that the game was essentially not going to be fair anymore. They were, um, even though it was almost 50-50 at the time, they went, oh, no, it's, it, even though it's 50-50, which is good, like, that's personally where I would like this game to be, is 50, 50 as, as close to 50-50 as you can get for both sides. Uh, Behavior didn't like that, essentially, so they gave killers a ton of buffs, and now I the game honestly isn't super fun for me anymore. I try to avoid playing it as much as I can now because it's just not fun anymore. Um, every match for me is almost is almost always a 4K. 99% of my matches now are 4Ks, and that's of course when I'm playing Survivor. When I'm playing Killer, it's almost it's 99% zero Ks or one Ks because I suck. Um, I will not be doing the screen that I typically do in these videos. I I'm, I apologize if you're ex expecting me to do that. I physically can't right now. So yeah, so it's always nerve-wracking to me when um when I read something that could potentially buff killers because, in my opinion, they don't need any more buffs. They're already curb-stomping me to the point where um, I'm one of the... Or to the point where I've become a player who only plays the game from time to time and does not play it often because, you know, it's it's only f so fun getting 4K'd every match for so long. Um, which is why when I took a break, which is why when the game was insanely toxic back in 2023 from May to August, at least part of August... I'm so happy I stopped playing after July and just never went back until um, Christmas because the toxicity died down, but it was still rough. And so I'm very happy to not be playing now because I don't have to worry about any of it, you know. Um, but we'll see when I play again. I'll obviously be going back. It's just been super nice just not playing it for a bit. Um Going for uh, going forward, each generator can only suffer from a maximum of eight regression events. Where a regression event is any time the killer or their perks removes at least two point five percent of the generator's progress in instant. 
An indicator will show the killer if a generator can no longer be damaged if you, in the overwhelming majority of games. This will not come into play. However, in scenarios where the killer is defending a stage generator and returning in the GMG survivors, it will eventually come to a point where they can no longer damage the generators, helping bring an end to excessively long matches. So I was curious, because they did mention um, in a previous Reddit thing, which I actually did make a video on years ago, um, well, I did a video sort of reacting to Odd Starbucks, like, super simple versions. And they mentioned that, um, that they wanted to end free gen. Free genning, free genning, free genning, tunning, tunneling, and camping are three of the most annoying things in the game. So this deal was free genning, they gave us the deja vu thing. And this, this sounds nice. I, I already know killer mains are going to complain. Because, um... Because if the game is like taking a while just because the survivors are good at looping and whatnot and so they're hitting gents a lot, um, I feel like they're going to complain because eventually you just won't be able to damage the gens anymore. So I feel like killer mains are definitely going to be um, very upset. But overall, I think this, again, all I can do right now is speculate based off of reading. But reading it, it sounds fairly good. Like, um,. I, I'm happy they're trying to remove free genning. They've been trying to remove tunneling and camping, but you can only get you can only get so far getting rid of those two. Um, but this one sounds like it'll straight up no longer be able to like for you to do that, and that's going to be huge. Uh, do I? I mean, you could. So I think for the better of the game, this will be good, and this will definitely help some of those annoying games. But I don't. I don't see this in being as a big enough change for me to like play the game a lot again, but I still think it's a very good change, and I'm excited to see how it works out. Uh, at the same time, I want to address a point of frustration for the killers for killers as well. Survivors were kind of generated briefly for to stop it from regressing or gen tapping. Yep, for short. Given that the number of regression events is not limited. Stopping generate from regressing is more meaningful than ever. To prevent survivors from having generated to negate one of those regression events, we have made two changes. Oh no. The base damage from kicking a generator has been increased to 5% with 2.5%. Okay. That's definitely a killer buff. Um, that kind of reminds me a little bit of back during the 40 perk rework when killers got a 20% blood cleaning, like animation, like speed boost thing where if you. Where it's twenty percent faster to clean to do the light cleaning animation than it was before, and it was twenty percent faster to break pallets and walls and whatnot during chases. And ever since those two changes, I have been very unhappy um, with the game because those changes were huge for killers. And ever since then, I just haven't. Again, I've just been getting destroyed, so I haven't had much fun. Um, so I'm definitely nervous about that because giving killers more buffs and, uh, like, I'm happy that both sides are getting buffed here in this instance, so I'm happy in that context, but there's only so, but, like, we'll, we'll see. I, I just think it's good that both sides are getting touched here. Um, they're addressing free genning, which is, uh, primarily started by the killer, um, I remember making a, a statement like that in a previous video that had something to do with free genning. Um, there was a comment basically being like, survivors can do it too. Uh, survivors can free gen themselves too. And it's like, sure, but the killer, in my opinion, has more impact on that. Because sure, the survivors could end up being on the free gens close together. But if the killer is actually playing the game like, doing the normal killer gameplay, then that's not an issue. You know what I mean? It's really not that big of a deal. Um, but where, but if the killer then is doing the free genning um, gameplay, then again, the killer has a lot of say in how free genning happens. Um, so while I understand that person's comment and agree with it to an extent, I still think killers are the major part of like a uh, free genning uh so the fact that they got so the fact that that got nerfed in such a crucial way is huge and makes me super excited and obviously they helped that killers as well which is good um 
I, I like it when both sides get buffs and, and nerf sort of together. I think that's fair to like nerf and buff both sides so both sides feel a bit more fair to play. That's good. Uh, at least 5% of the generator's total charges must be repaired to stop regression. Otherwise, it would be getting regressing again when the survivor starts repairing. That's an interesting change. So you have to sit on a gen a, a little bit longer now. I don't know how I feel about that one. I really don't. That It'll be interesting to see for sure. But that, that might help out killers quite a bit. We'll, we'll see. Um, on the paper, or reading it in this case, it sounds solid. But we'll see. Uh, this will happen straight out of the killer. Always get some value from kicking and generating encourage survivors to think twice before attending sides of regression. And encourage survivors to think twice before attending the stop the regression. I don't really know how I feel. I doubt wording makes me slightly angry because the whole point of playing survivor is doing gens, opening gates, and surviving. So I'm not I, I so that uh, wording makes me a little angry because you are ha because if a gen is regressing, you're sort of forced to do it because you have to do gens to survive. Um, so that wording makes me slightly angry. You're um, slightly angry. I can't yell or anything because of my face, but the but yeah that that wording made me is making me slightly angry. But we're not I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, anyways, FOV slider, which this intrigues me because there's two perks that do that. Um, and they, and actually they're mentioning those perks. Um, so, okay, so, and they're going to mention the two perks. Okay, so let's get into this. Is, is Shadowborn permanently locked into one of your perk slots? No. Uh, I, no, nobody uses Shadowborn. Shadowborn is probably one of the least used perks in the entire game right now. Um, my, my personal least favorite perk does get used by quite a few people, and I'm still angry behavior will refuse us to touch it. I was so excited because I was like, the 40 perk rework, they might touch it, but they didn't, so I'm still upset about that. And also, now that the, the perk that people primarily like used it for is, is hella nerfed, um, the perk is even more useless. So I hate it even more. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, well, that's about to change. Thanks to the new first-person field of view, or the FOV slider. Starting with this update, killers in first-person will all be, all be, will be able to adjust their FOV to, some, to something. They're more comfortable with ranging from 87 degrees to current default to 150 degrees to current maximum with Shadowborn. Perks which alter your FOVs, Shadowborn and Monster and BS will need to be adjusted. We'll cover exactly how those perks are changed during later and disposed. Bear in mind the this option only applies to first person field of view and therefore not affect survivors since survivors play the game from the third person perspective. A wider FOV would be would add to an already advantaged camera view. And, that, and I'm assuming uh, Chucky probably won't get that either because Chucky is also played in the third person. Initially, the feature will be accessible for the beta tab in-game. So I can't comment a whole lot on the FOV slider because there's only so much to say about that, but I think it's good for people that need it. The Onryo, a.k.a. Sadako. They have touched Sadako and Skull Merchant quite a few times. Um, Sadako was dead upon release... Was very hated upon release. Very few people actually bought her chapter. I am starting to see Sadika and the major update they gave her um, towards the end of 2023 helped her. People actually started playing Sadako again a bit more. That was nice. So when I heard, so when I saw that they were that she was getting touched, I was definitely a little nervous. Um, a character who very um, at least. Sadako got touched better than Skull Merchant did. Skull Merchant, upon like in PTB and upon relief, was like very hated for the free genning. Then they buffed her a week later. And people still hated it. And then towards the end of twenty twenty three, they just they basically said fuck it and absolutely changed everything about her. Um, and honestly, I still feel like she came out better. She's more fun to play against. She's no longer the free genning queen. Thank God. Um, nor does she, well, plus she's no longer the boar merchant as everyone called her because she was the free genning queen. Um, so she's actually like fun again. 
Um, but still, let's see what they did with Sadako. I'm I'm very nervous though. I'm not a great Sadako player, but I do enjoy her, so we'll see. Uh, a few months ago, we released a major update to the Onryo or Sadako. Though some players were pleased with the changes, many longtime Onryo mains felt that the, her gameplay had changed too much from the killer they once loved. In this update, we want to revisit Sadako once more to find a middle ground which better appeals to her, to all her players, old and new. Interesting. I personally think she came out a lot better after the changes because they actually like managed to get condemned to actually happen. Um, the gameplay before with Sadako, I'm surprised people enjoyed that. I I, I am. I, I I'm a, I'm surprised so many people enjoyed it. Because condemning was pretty much non-existent with Sadako back then. Um, and now it is like a thing that happens. And also she's just so like, I don't know, boring. Or, or she's not boring, but like she like was kind of part of why people didn't play old school, well, old Sadako much was because she wasn't like particularly like great. Uh, us Darva put her in the lowest tier on this tier list and whatnot. Um, but other people were saying she was S tier, so she was in a weird spot before. I think she came out a lot better. So I'm nervous because this is um, nerfing because this is because trying to find a middle ground means that there's a, that she'll probably be getting nerfed in multiple ways, like toned down. So we'll see. Uh, condemned. In the last update, condemned would spread to all survivors who were not holding a tape whenever Psycho projected to a TV. This allowed her to spread her curse more often, but many felt that this favored teleporting as soon as possible rather than strategically during a chase. We have a few changes in mind to restore this gameplay while keeping condemned more prominent. Because they wanted condemned to be more prominent. It wasn't around much. Condemned was you basically useless before that major update, so I'm nervous that they already touched her. <laughs> when the Onryo teleports, survivors within 15 meters of a power survivor were received with Saka Condemned. The teleport cooldown has been removed, allowing her to teleport more frequently. Interesting call there. Removing the cooldown. <laughs> Removing the cooldown sounds like the opposite of what it, you wanted to do behavior. Oh, the gameplay is teleporting as fast as possible. Let's remove the cooldown so they can do it even more. Okay. When a survivor select their current condemned progress becomes locked in, preventing it from being removed. Uh, this will make it very risky for survivors to ignore Psycho's curse. Survivors will want to shut off nearby TVs and deposit their tapes before it's too late. Speaking of tapes, curse tapes. So, uh, so the condemning part was weird to me. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, removing the teleporting cooldown, it feels like the exact opposite of what they said in like, like literally like a sentence ago um, of like what they wanted to do. The other changes are fine. They don't sound too different from how they are now. It's just that teleporting without a cooldown part that it's just kind of like, so you don't want her to teleport as often as possible, but you're giving, but you're straight up removing the cooldown so she can teleport more frequently now. Okay, like, interesting call there. Uh, Cursed Tapes. We've also reviewed the way Cursed Tapes work to bring back some of their fondly remembered behavior, which was basically being pointless, at least in my opinion. <laughs> okay. Curse Tapes no longer protects survivors from getting condemned. Oh yeah, that was a thing that they did, didn't they, like, by holding them. I think that's a good change, honestly. Curse Tapes are no longer destroyed or inflict condemned when a survivor's hit. I think that's another fairly solid change. Sadako might be busted, but we'll, we'll, Sadako might come, become busted after this, but we'll see. Curse Tapes can only be deposited in the further TV from where they were picked up. No, I mean, not terrible. So once again, forced his driver to spend more time crossing the map in order to delay the curse. Uh, demanifested. The previous update made it so the Onryo couldn't start a chase while demanifested. She cannot. This had a side effect to make it very obvious when she demanifests in the middle of chase, allowing survivors to anticipate and play around. And now she can chase survivors while the manifested. That's good. I feel like that's a fairly good change. Additionally, many pointed out that one of Onryo's change add-ons, Reiko's Watch, was very fun to use rather than add the effect back into the add-on, 
We instead to incorporate it into our base kit to make the add-on feel less essential. Nice. The duration of invisibility while the manifest has been increased to 1.2 seconds was one second. So now, so, so now her invisibility is longer. Fair. That's pretty good. Honestly, I, I, I Sonica's changes don't sound terrible. Again, the condemning part kind of confuses me. Many pointed out to us that teleporting, that that now that her current state is teleport as much as possible. So we're removing the cooldown of teleporting. <laughs> that that's really the only part about Sonico I have any concerns with, and I'm just making fun of it because I just think it's hilarious. I'm not saying it's like good or bad. I'm just saying that like I just find that hilarious. That they went that way. Add-ons. With these changes, why we've reviewed a handful of the Onryo's add-ons, which either no longer have a purpose or promote a strongly disliked playstyles. Oh, that's good. Oh, God. So they're not going to tell us what they're doing with some of the other add-ons. They're just letting us know that they're reviewing them. So that's good. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Sadiko comes out of this. The Hillbilly. One of the least played killers of the game. <laughs> okay. Um, he, his change, I was honestly the most excited for when I read the, like, roadmap thing, because Zodico's changes, I was expecting, like, them probably to tweak some stuff down, so, and I, honestly, I'm happy that Hurtis was first, she had some fairly solid changes. Blight's changes, which should be after this, weren't very intriguing to me, because they were just as add-ons, and people were insanely pissed that it took them so long to get to those. I'm indifferent, I don't play Blight. Because I suck. So yeah. But Billy, I was intrigued by about because I I someone who surprise who has been giving behavior the benefit that that was Hillbilly. I thought them removing his heat thing was good. And I also thought that them remo getting rid of like stats from his best add ons was good because um they wanted other people to Play, like you see other things. I, I was the only person who liked the fact that those add-ons got changed. Apparently, um, I've heard. Um, I've I've I, Orange once when I was talking to him defend uh, defended the people who were who basically forced behavior to basically defended the players, which is why they reverted it. Um, but I I'm I still thought it was good because if we just would have given like them some time to figure out like what they want to do with the other add-ons and whatnot. I think Billy could have been fairly... His add-ons could have been fairly good. Um, but the players um, were so pissed off about the change that it never happened, so they had to revert it. So let's see. Let's see if Billy once again triggers a bunch of people to get pissed off and them having to revert everything once again. <laughs> Uh, uh oh, watch out, survivors. It looks like someone unwrapped a brand new chainsaw. It's the Hillbillies turn for an update. What? Overdrive! What? <laughs> the controversial overheat mechanic is no more because it, and they're, because they didn't feel like it had a place anymore. Overdrive is the new talk in the town. If the Hillbilly uses this chainsaw, it will generate heat just like before. When the heat meter is full, not only will he continue being able to use it, but his chainsaw will kick in the overdrive and gain the following effects for the next 20 seconds. Okay, so they essentially are keeping... So they're keeping overheat how it is now. Where it still happens, but not, like, super well. But they kind of played into wanting you to get overheat, essentially. Or 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 they straight up just removed all of overheat just to do this. Uh, chainsaw charge speed is increased by 5%. His chainsaw sprint movement speed is increased to 13 meters a second, and the chainsaw sprint cooldowns are reduced by 10%. This this short version, heat is good now. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. So basically, it sounds like for it sounds like for Billy. Okay, speaking of boy, yeah, he'll probably be my least favorite of the killer changes, but we'll see. So it sounds like with Billy, they basically what. Hey, you know that mechanic we removed of because it doesn't fit a place? Let's make that mechanic a good thing now. Uh, cleaning up. At the same time, we've made some general improvements to the Hillbilly's kit and smoothed out some of the rougher edges. The base chainsaw sprint movement speed has been increased by 10%. 
Reduce the size of the chainsaw's collision detection to make chainsaw sprints more maneuverable in mass with high density tiles. And camera sensitivity is no longer incorrectly tied to the controller sensitivity settings while using a mouse and keyboard. Chainsaw controls are now equal to 100% sensitivity before. Honestly, his changes don't sound bad. But, we'll, again, we'll have to see in-game add-ons. Last but certainly not least, we have done a pass on the Hillbillies add-ons. With these changes in mind, this blog post is long enough as it is, so keep an eye on the patch notes when the public test build, PTP, goes live for more details. Okay, the Blight's add-ons. Next up, we have changes in store for a handful of the Blight's add-ons. Bl Blighted Rat and Blighted Crow, which I believe are two of the best ones for them. These add-ons are fairly strong because they're considered as best, I believe, or at least super good. Uh, making it far more difficult to get out of the way if it's, ru if it's, rush is if it's rush in time. You could have worded that a little bit better, Behavior. We have reduced the rush speed bonus of these add-ons to 2% and 3% respectively with 4% and 6%. Okay, not bad, not bad. And he's still a pretty good killer, so I mean, that doesn't... That's yeah, definitely good. Adrenaline and Vile, this sound has a lot going on, making it jack of all trades to simply it, it uh, to simple to simply it you should have worked I think they meant simplify it, but they said put simply it. Okay, good job behavior. And bring it closer in line with other options, we are removing the following effects. No longer decreases time to recharge a rush token by one second and no longer increases rush speed by ten percent. That's fair, that's fair. This add-on now does the following. These effects are unchanged. Increases maximum rush tokens by 2. Increases maximum rush wick angle by 20 degrees. And decreases rush turn rate by 55%. Okay. F pretty solid. Pretty solid. Alchemist Ring. The one you probably aren't surprised to see on this list. I don't remember enough about Blight to really recognize any of these effects. But yes. Uh, restoring rush tokens on hit is incredibly powerful. So we've reworked this add-on entirely. Which is smart. Increases rush duration by 20% for each consecutive rush. That's fair. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, that sounds very good. Compound 33. Reducing the survivor's minimum speed acts very similarly to increasing the wise rush speed. We've decided the best course of action is to give this add-on new effect. Each consecutive rush, which is no well longer than 4 meters, increases turn rate by 33%. That's good. Iridescent Blight Tag. Oh, hey, we're well, also the perk updates. Nice. I, I remember, I didn't watch the video, but based on a thumbnail of a Odd Starva video where he went over the same thing I'm going over to you now. Sounds like Save the Best or Last is uh, controversial, but we're not there yet. Era doesn't blight tag. This add-on can also be extremely powerful in the right hands. It also promotes the awkward gameplay of repeatedly slamming into a wall to take advantage of the effects of the last rush. We've given this add-on a brand new effect as well. Enables rush to be performed without spending tokens. Rush bonuses are capped after three consecutive rushes and blighted corruption goes on cooldown for 20 seconds after a successful lethal rush tech. I don't hate it. Honestly, I think blight changes are uh, add-on changes are fairly solid. That's kind of what people have been complaining about for years, apparently, is that blight's add-ons were too strong. And honestly, the changes sound pretty good. I'm very excited to see the future of to see what boys like at now. Um, it'll be interesting. Next up, we've got a bunch of perk updates this year. Starting off with the one that um, be, uh, Starva wasn't too happy, seemingly too happy about. Save the best for last. This perk indirectly became stronger when the successful basic attack cooldown was released some time ago. I mentioned that earlier in this video. That was during the 40 perk rework, and that made killers, in my opinion, super strong. And ever since then, I have been not super happy because I just keep getting 4K. And Save the Best for Last is still, it has been a solid perk. It was a solid perk before that, was a very solid perk after that, and it was still being used. So let's see what I do here. Um, certain killers can also circumvent the downside by using their special attacks to enter the obsession and because nurse now her blink had changed from a basic attack to a special attack she was another character who worked around that enter the obsession to tone it down and make it more consistent across all killers we have made the following changes each token grants a stackable four percent decrease successful 
basic attack cooldown was 5%. So that went down by 1%. But that, of course, that 1% adds up as you're getting tokens. So that's... I still feel like that's fairly good, though, because it's still, you know, getting decreased. Two tokens are lost when the obsession loses a health state by any means was just basic attacks. I believe that might be why pe why uh, Starva wasn't super happy about it and other people, seemingly. But I think it is definitely... it's I On paper, it sounds fairly good, though, because they don't... Obviously, they don't want the perks to be too strong. And the perk is still good. It's just now you lose more tokens when you hit the... It's just now you lose tokens by doing base... Uh, Special attacks as well. I might be the only person who likes this change right now. We'll see. Um, but obviously, I like I keep an open up. I I try to keep an open mind when they're doing changes because they might change some stuff around. Like later, you never know. Grim Embrace, which I know pretty much nothing at all about this change. The only change in here that I knew even somewhat about um, was. Um, was say the best for last. So Grim Embrace, which is a perk I don't see used very often. Grim Embrace blocks generators for a substantial duration. However, it only activates once and requires to carry the hook every survivor once. It can be a little inconsistent and hard to activate. Therefore, we're adding a secondary effect on top of the existing effect. The first time a survivor is hooked, all generators are blocked for 8, 10, 12 seconds once the killer moves up at least 10 meters from the hook. It's only sure that killer is always able to get some value out of their perk, even if the last elusive survivor manages to evade them and reward killers who switch targets. That's a fairly decent change. Um, n nothing crazy about it, which is good. Quick Gambit, a perk that absolutely sucks dick. This perk grants other survivors a repair speed boost when you are being chased or bought. However, its range is fairly low and it sucks dick, making it difficult to get close enough for survivors to benefit from it without also putting them in danger. We have increased the range from 36 meters to 36 meters west for 24 meters, so that's good. And they reduced the repair speed bonus to 3, 4, 5% with 6, 7, 8%. Interesting. So they made the range bigger, but now you get, like, less speed increase. That's an interesting change. Um, I don't know if it'll be enough, though, because the re part of why Quick Gambit wasn't being used is just kind of the nature of the game. If you're being chased and you're trying to get Quick Gambit value, the survivor on the gem will probably just get off of it. So there's only so much you can do to make the perk enticing because based off the like how players play the game, you know that makes get doing it tricky. But we we shall see. The changes sounds good, but again we shall see if um, how effective it will be or how used it will be. Hex ruin. We tell them this perk down in previous update. I remember that, and I'm so happy they did that because. Ruin was because the um, that change. Because Ruin was a super powerful perk back then. In retrospect, since the perk had already been cleansed, to be assailed by being cleansed, the added activation condition did not feel necessary. Hex Ruin is no longer disabled once a survivor skill or sacrifice. Okay, so basically, so now the perk will actually stay there for all four survivors, and but it has all of its other effects. That's interesting. It was very nice how um, it like went away when you killed somebody for the survivors so we'll, but we shall see i'm keeping an open mind i think it's a fairly good change and i perfectly perfectly understand why they did that so i'm not too angry about it shadowborn was the new fov slider being introduced shadowborn is now obsolete and needs a new effect it was always obsolete to some extent but yes when blinded by any means get a 6 8 10 percent haste effect for 10 seconds so if you get blinded you're now faster okay interesting pick Monitor abuse. Likewise, the FOV altering effects of monitor abuse are now unnecessary considering the added FOV slider. Monitor abuse allows for some interesting niche play styles as is. As so, we have simply removed the FOV adjustments from this perk and left the terrorist effects unchanged. That's exactly what I thought they were going to do with monitor and abuse. So that doesn't surprise me at all. In fact, somebody better pick up that ringing phone because I fucking called it. Anyways, uh, the Ormond's gameplay update. The newly re the newly renovated Mount Ormond Resort is open for the season. Interesting that they're updating it. 
This update consists of layout changes to the front and back of the lodge as well as miscellaneous loop adjustments. In front of the loop, lodge currently has a long row of rocks stretching across it. This can get in the way and make it difficult to traverse the map. Yes. Additionally, there's no room in this portion of the map for any windows or pallets, essentially making it a big dead zone. Yep. We go in this portion of the map and overhaul to create more interesting game. Okay, so they targeted basically the big dead part of the map where not much is there. Interesting move. The back of the lodge, meanwhile, is comprised of mostly picnic tables. Great for enjoying a meal in the freezing cold, but not very impactful when it comes to gameplay. Pallet lists around these ta tables are fairly short, making them incredibly unsafe. We have similarly adjusted this area to improve gameplay. Honestly, not bad, not bad, not bad. Game modifiers. While these will not be in the upcoming PTB, our first limited time modifier the modifier that by doing white out will be available to play in the coming months. Stay tuned for more information. Congratulations to reach the end of the very long developer update. Everything we've mentioned here will be available to test it on the public test bill starting tomorrow, which is today. Um, again, I'm ringing this late because of my job being screwed up and I was just never able to get around to it. Um, starting tomorrow, as always, we'll take the time to read for your feedback and make further adjustments as needed before the update goes live on all platforms in the week following. Until next time, done by the team. All right, guess what I read it. So, final thoughts. I might get sniped tonight, for my opinion on Save the Best for Last. Um, because I, it's, it's just based off of the, uh, start of a thumbnail uh, of the video that I saw where he was reading it. He looked very unpleased. And I know a lot of people value his opinion, and I do too to some extent. But yeah, I'm, I might get sniped tonight. Uh, the Sonic changes I thought were solid. Billy's changes sounded pretty good, but I can't fully comment until I see them in action. The Blades add-on changes, I'm sure, will make people happy because people have been begging for that for years. Uh, the FOV slider sounds uh, pretty helpful. Shadowborn still only, I mean, Shadowborn sounds more usable now, in my opinion, which is nice. Uh, all the perk changes I sat, thought were pretty interesting. Quick Gambit is still the only one I'm kind of on the fence about, but that's not because of the perks, but that's not the perk's fault. That's the, um, that's sort of, that's sort of the player's, like, in general fault, because a lot of players... Uh, we'll just run off a gen of a killers by them, regardless of if they're the ones being chased or not. So it's very hard to get value out of that perk. But I think that quick game, quick game changes are interesting, and the game modifier sounds interesting as well. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video, read the bell, do all the algorithmic garbage. It helps us out a lot, and it means a lot to us, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.